Good morning, everyone. We have, again, what is a well-known reading. It's a small part of the teaching that Jesus was giving the disciples about the second coming. Teaching that is to be found in chapters 24 and 25 of St. Matthew's Gospel. And if you look back in your Bibles, you will see that when Jesus was leaving the temple, his disciples drew attention to the buildings and Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left, one on another. Every one will be thrown down. This has traditionally been an indication of God's judgment on the people of Israel, the destruction of the Jerusalem and of the temple. Later, when Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, which is probably only about a 20-minute walk from the walls of Jerusalem, but it is quite a climb, so no wonder he was sitting resting. His disciples came to him and asked, what would happen and what would be the sign of his coming and the end of this age? Jesus used this opportunity to teach them about what would happen in the period before his second coming. A period that we are now living in. He tells us, he tells the disciples that they will be handed over and persecuted and put to death. That they will be hated by all the nations because of their commitment to following Jesus' teaching. He says that many of them, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And that there will be many false prophets who lead the people astray. And because of the wickedness, the love of many will fade but those who stand firm in their faith will be saved that is the gospel of the kingdom of Christ that is the gospel that will be preached across all nations across the whole world it will be at that time the end of the world will come He goes on to elaborate further and says that no one will know the hour or the day of the second coming. That not even the angels or himself knew. Only the Father knows when that will be. There have been those who have tried to work out when it will be and postulated their ideas and dates have come and gone. It seems to be that human, by human nature we want to know what the future has in hold for us so that we can plan for it, so that it does not take us by surprise. Sometimes we do not know what we would do And it would wreck our lives completely if we did. In his elaboration, Jesus tells several parables to indicate what would be going on before his second coming. He tells of the servants who are put in charge while their masters are away. And that they will lose their way the parable of the ten virgins, the parable of the talents, and the parable of the sheep and goats, describing what will happen at the end of the age. 
Our reading today is a parable of the ten virgins. It is about waiting and being prepared. We are in a time of waiting. We are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. Just like those virgins who were waiting for the bridegroom to come. There are many things going on in this world at present and it is easy to get disheartened and wonder if Jesus is ever going to come. The answer to that is yes, he will. Jesus said this period would be a time of trouble, disagreements, wars and rumours of wars, We have today spent some time remembering those who have died in war. Unfortunately, there are many who are dying currently, even as I speak now, who are dying because of war. We live in an era of conflict, where we see conflict in many areas of the world. Even our own parliamentary system is based around conflict, one could say. There is conflict in the church with the many different denominations, not in communion with one another, and even in the Church of England itself. But what does this parable say we need to do? We need to wait for the coming of Jesus. And more importantly, we need to be prepared for his coming. Are you prepared? It is one thing to expect Jesus to come. But we need to be living lives that expect it to happen. So we are not caught out when it happens. In our reading, we see that of the ten virgins, five had bought some spare oil and five did not. Which of these virgins represents you? Are you prepared for Jesus' coming? And are you prepared to wait for that coming? All the bridesmaids were sleeping at the time. The bridegroom was coming. And that only, but the parable only seems to criticise those who fail to prepare for the wait. Some people speculate that the oil represents the Holy Spirit, saying that only some of the virgins were truly filled with the Holy Spirit, whilst others were not. Some say that the failure of the five to share their oil is not Christian. But others say the oil represents the Holy Spirit, so it could not be passed from one to the other. But it could simply be that Jesus was saying, are you prepared? Have you got the oil that you need? My question to you this morning is, are you prepared for Jesus' second coming? Or are you relying on the fact that you come to church each week as being sufficient? We need to keep watch so we are ready and prepared when Jesus comes. Otherwise, we might find ourselves on the wrong side of the door as the five virgins who had to go away and find some more oil. We will be hammering on the door to be let in, but denied entry because we were not ready. I will commend each one of us to spend some time today to read chapters 24 and 25 of St Matthew's Gospel. We don't have an excuse that we don't know as we have been told by Jesus what will happen. 
if you'd like to speak to Tim or I at some stage, then please do so. Thank you.